Hey everyone, we are in the last month of 2020, December, and we have our last five games from uh, Amazon Prime Gaming, so let's take a look at them. Listen. So something I usually try to do is try to relate some theme that happened, and we didn't have much of that this year, the more I realize it, but there wasn't really one this month, so we're just going to start with Close to the Sun. Uh, Close to the Sun is a horror game that came out in 2019. Metacritic scores 66 and is about $20. And you're looking at about four hours of gameplay here. So this is kind of like your walking simulator. But there's a little more to it. It's not as bad as that. But it's no combat. So it's a game. You'll have some chase scenes. But it has a pretty decent story. You are Rose and you are got a letter from her sister to kind of come visit or help out it was kind of unclear and you kind of find out there's some time manipulation here and some weird things going on what stands out a lot in this game is the graphics it looks a lot like bioshock you're getting bioshock feels in this game but the ship and all is amazing looking i like the detail of the levels um this isn't like horror in the sense of like scary but it's more the environment and the setup of the camera is important. Like every time you open a door, it does that zoom in on the handle. So you're always expecting something to jump. So it's trying to keep you tense, basically. Uh, the puzzles are pretty okay. Nothing too complicated. It's more like exploring the world. I got the more feeling of them. Um, and I wasn't a fan of the annoying zooms. I always hated horror games because of that because you know it's a setup. Uh, when a door closes, you're waiting for something to stop it, which actually happens in this game. Um, and I could tell a lot of scenes were setting up for a jump. So I didn't care for that, but I was on a fence for this game. I don't know what to really put it. So I just leaned actually to download. Um, this isn't my type of game, but if I was kind of more into these, I could see this being actually enjoyable. And that's why I did download. Um, this is basically the positive here. It's a four-hour game. I feel like... This is like the quote-unquote date night game. You could sit there with your partner and play this in one night and probably have a decent story to enjoy and a fun game to watch. Um, the cons here is no combat, and it's kind of a slow pace. Um, so it's trying to immerse you in the land, and if you don't like that, it's going to be a long game for you. Next up, we have Sigma Theory. Global Cold War. I had to make sure I had that right. Came out also last year in 2019. 70 on metacritic and about 18 dollars and you're looking at about seven hours in the story and this is a turn-based strategy you'll get a risk feel it's the whole world um and basically the goal is here to be the first country to invent the signa to take over uh, how it starts off is you hire agents you have to do like this phone screening process and try to make it look good to help them um i failed on the first one but figured it out and basically, you kind of move your agent you get to, like, track scientists, uh, arms deals, hack networks, and negotiate. And it's pretty simple controls. You just drag. I felt the tutorial kind of blocked your controls. I had problems, like, dragging people to go to another country. But once the tutorial went away, like, I could do it all the time. So it was weird. I had some issues there. But it was really s straightforward game. Um, and... There was just a lot of text, and actually when I start stopped playing this, was I started having, now I noticed that you do turns per day, so it's a little slow on that, but then I had to set up meetings and interrogate with the leaders, and this just was not the game for me, so I would say not a download in my opinion. The positives here, if you do want to play it, it is kind of very political strategy game, so it's a lot of manipulating, getting countries on your side, taking them down by like hacking them from the inside and you can get caught so you don't want your hackers in your nation so they don't think you're the threat so it's a lot of just political stuff if you're into that uh the reasons i didn't like it was it was a lot of reading which sounds weird but it was very text heavy for how nice actually the map looks uh you have to set up meetings was my big complaint and just doing a lot of that and people interaction it just wasn't for me Next up, we have a game that actually appeared in November 2019 uh, on the uh, Prime Gaming, which was Turmoil. Um, it came out in 2016. 
Got Metacritic score 73, and it's about $10 and 8 hours of gameplay. And this is a simple market simulator. Since I did review this before, I still stand by what I said. This was not a download. Um, it looks to play a lot better on mobile, and it's also for the Switch. And just by the controls, it just wasn't enough for me to be interested in PC. Um, it's pretty classic gameplay, so that is the positives here. If you like the old style market sims, you would definitely like this. But the con here was, I feel like if I had it on my cell phone, I would enjoy this a lot more versus clicking left and right every now and then on the PC. I just felt like it wasn't enough to keep me interested in that. Next up, we have Wizard of Legend, which came out in 2018 and has a Metacritic score of 79. And you're looking at about seven hours of gameplay, and this game's normally $16. And this is a dungeon crawler. Um, the best game I can compare this to is Enter the Gungeon, um, which I'll explain later. But the story here is you start in a museum, and you learn how to play the game and actually learn about these trials. You learn uh, wizards get honored if they do the trials and defeat the three i guess not gods but the top wizards and that's basically the game is you do the three trials and that's it but the trials consist of three different worlds and there's three parts you play two levels each ending with a mini boss and then you fight the final boss in the third part and then it just repeats this is the enter gungeon style on the sense of you're just going to lose at first you have basic equipment it's going to be hard and that's this game is going to struggle on that. You play and you buy from the market and you get better and better equipment until you can advance. Um, I actually enjoy these games a lot. If you never played them, they are interesting uh, to get involved with. But it is like an upgrading thing. And when you die, you start back at the beginning. So each world, you have a map and you have to explore. Each section has a store, a merchant to purchase items. Um, some of them are weapons and then other ones are like equipment. And then there's a boss portal. Once you start it, you can't go back in the level and you have to fight the mini boss. Um, so it pays to explore. You want to find all this and collect money to buy new equipment, but it can cost you health. You're going to take some damage and you continue your damage throughout the level. So you have to kind of balance how much do I really want to explore. Or if I'm low on health, I really can't explore. I need to continue. So there's trade-offs and that's what makes these games fun. I enjoyed the graphics a lot. It's this nice, like, 16-bit game. I really like the look of it. The bosses look cool. The Even the NPC normal guys are cool. Um, the music I really enjoyed throughout, and I would say this is definitely a download. Uh, the positives here, it's a very fun, retro-looking dungeon crawler that was very enjoyable. Um, the con here is for people that hate repetitiveness and the struggle, like I said. The game is designed to make you play over and over. So you're going to have to do that, which is going to be a turn off for some people. Last up, we got a game that came out in January this year called HyperDot. Um, this did not have a review on Metacritic. Uh, there was no reviews, actually, so that was interesting. It's about three hours, and it's $20. And three hours for the story. Um, this is an arcade game. Uh no story to it, you're a dot in this circle arena, and you have to dodge things. That's basically it. You don't really shoot, but you get power-ups. Um, and you can kind of think of this like Geometry Wars without the shooting, is how I can best think of it. Because there you get a bunch of shapes you just have to dodge. And the power-ups are like these bombs that will clear a certain area of the arena. And where the game really gets unique is these modifiers it does on there. So it can make you like your dot smaller, bigger more enemies appear but they actually even modified the world so sometimes it'll be dark so you only have a light around you and it casts shadows around the enemies so it's like hard to see and they add ice so you slide around more so it's pretty fun there uh the bad guys that appear are based off the shape so like the squares just go straight then you have the pointer icons that kind of follow you stuff like that and the goals actually change so most of the time you're doing like survive for a certain amount of time which is your generic but then there's also like collections dots will appear that you have to collect or you have to stay in a small area inside the arena to capture so like um capture the hill style um there's a multiplayer where both players are in the same arena and you can't kind of bump into each other so that makes it fun and it also has a twitch integration which allows your chat to change the modifiers on you 
so it will change the game and overall i enjoyed this a lot i mean there's no story here it's a simple arcade game but it's fun and that's the positive here it's just an arcade game you can play and put down easy and then they have like this gauntlet mode where you could try to do the story and see how far you get uh so it's pretty cool the cons here it, while watching this you just saw shapes and you're like it's just shapes on there there ain't much to it you're probably not going to like it and that's probably the biggest uh con here for most people so yeah we had a very very interesting year this year um some of the games i still have installed uh, maybe that's a concern to kind of show which ones i thought were the best throughout the year i still have chroma squad um that's that power rangers game that looks awesome and just funny i liked it uh, i did keep hyper dot is a game i'm going to keep from this month uh i got jay and silent bob still don't know why i kept it. i guess i'm a big fan of silent bob uh kevin smith so that's probably the main reason all right another game on here is kunai um where you're the computer like fighting robots and that game was just amazing uh light matter i love my portal light games and that one really shined i got old school musical still uh that's like the 8-bit going through different games and basically playing like a guitar hero and i'm actually going to keep a uh, wizard of legend as well uh so there's two games this month i really liked and those are the games that I kind of thought were standouts this year that I really enjoyed. Uh, Kunai and Light Matter was probably the biggest. Chroma Squad was a close third there, though. So those were the three I, I enjoyed the most, I think, throughout this year. Uh, let me know how y'all liked the year. Um, and if you're never familiar with this, um, Prime Gaming, you get a bunch of games now. So if you follow through the middle this year, you saw I was like reviewing nine games. Uh, so you get a game every Friday, plus like five games every month on top of that. Like I looked at the store, and it's like 38 games you can download. Uh, SNK games go away this month, uh, but there's a bunch of those. So definitely check it out. You can get probably close to 30-some games by the end of this year. Just start out. Maybe you just built a new computer and want stuff to play. They are older games, but they'll play them, and most of the games probably will play on most pc builds there's not too many intensive games so there's enough for everyone to enjoy um so anyways i'll see you next year for some more free games peace